Hello, welcome back to Furious Driving and it's still freezing cold and the ice has just melted off the car so it's a perfect time to go and get the bucket and sponge out and make it even colder. So it'll be nice and icy tomorrow morning when we try and go out. Great plan. Right, the last time we saw this car we were taking care of the interior. I've only used it a couple of times since then so the interior is still lovely and clean apart from a couple of muddy prints on those rather grubby foot mats which uh, a couple of people commented I need to get some new floor mats for this car. You're not wrong, I do, they are letting the side down. However, the outside is also letting the side down considerably so today I'm going to make an effort of making the car look presentable from outside. It's a lovely car underneath now, lots of work done to it in the last couple of videos. So let's go through a full detailing process, getting rid of all this stuff which is etched into the paint under the bonnet and on top of the car. Now this car is by no means as bad as say that Fiesta which had been sat in a bush for about two years. This has been sat outside here for about six months but this is outside and in the dry largely for the first six months and then inside a workshop for the six months after that. And I'd never cleaned the underbody area in the time I've had the car which is a couple of years now. So it's just a bit grimy here and this area around both these strut tops is all new metal and new paint. Uh, surprisingly dusty already. I'm quite surprised at that. Uh, something which I was surprised to find when I got this car is that from the factory there were big foam blocks that sit in the corner here by the bonnet hinges the point of which I guess is cosmetic or vibration reduction I don't really know but the, what it actually does though is it traps water in there it doesn't absorb water but it traps water underneath it and so you get lots of rot in these corners which is why these cars all rot out it's ridiculous so yeah I'll, but I was also going to sand and paint these strut chassis legs here which have got a lot of surface rust and bubbling paint on them. It's, it's thick metal so it's got a bit of time before it goes but it's so cold today if I did tackle that it just wouldn't dry so it's a job to be left for the summertime. I'll just make it pretty today. Something I also have to do is change this thermostat because that is busted. I have got a new one in the back seat of the car. We'll see how the, uh, the cleaning process goes and if it's still daylight when I'm finished because it's um, yeah going to get dark in about three hours. It's nine o'clock in the morning, it'll be dark by lunchtime. Right, let's go and start putting some uh, lift off and things on this. Actually, the more I look around this underbonnet area, the more I think it all needs a repaint under the front area. The strut legs need doing, also the blue of the slam panel needs doing, and this black panel here needs taken care of as well. It'd be nice to do the entire front end. And to be honest, the bonnet, I'm going to do some stone chip retouching later on as well once it's all polished but that needs doing as well so it'd be nice to just repaint the entire front end of the car at some point. Always expenses with this car, never mind, anyway. Ah, don't forget Rover Cups are available in the online Redbubble store, they are a welcome addition to any garage, workshop, kitchen or dining table. Uh, also a welcome addition is this new, whoops, Karcher uh, hose. You have to buy, weirdly, a complete hose pipe with one of these lance things as well. I don't know why you can't just buy the hose pipe on its own because it's it's two separate items in the box. But they make you pay 40 quid for the lance plus the hose instead of just 20 quid for the hose. <sighs> Very annoying. So I'm not going in and blasting any of the electronics, I'm going around for the other areas like bottles, engine tops, covers, that kind of thing. Whereas an electronic area like the fuses and stuff, I'm leaving that be. That's just a wetting stage, so now I can get in with the uh, lift off, which is a traffic film eliminator or traffic film remover. Uh, a lot of people like this instead of um, snow foam on the exterior of the vehicle as well. So there's a bit of a debate as to which is better. Personally, I like this under the bonnet. And I like snow if I'm outside the car, but that's just me. If there's any really heavy deposits, it's like this stuff around the, uh, which filler cap is that? There's no label on it. Um, I do have some engine cleaner and some tar away, which is like a more aggressive formula. Now we'll leave this to work for a few minutes and then we get, oh, this is actually an alloy wheel brush, but it also works brilliantly for working into crevices, nooks and crannies on uh, the engine bay. So getting you all into this kind of molded, uh, lines on the top of the engine cover. Now I'm going to go in with some engine cleaner on this area here because it's had some horrible stuff spilt in and, and soaked in over the years. And likewise this reservoir over here as well just needs a bit more 
oomph. Oh, I can now see that's power steering fluid. <laughs> I had no clue there was a label on there before. Now, although it is the chemicals that do the heavy lifting, there's a lot of agitation required to get into the nooks, crannies, crevices, and get all the ingrained, baked on oil, grease, out of these little nooks and crannies. But the whole thing does come up looking amazing. You can leave it to soak on there for a couple of minutes. That certainly doesn't hurt. Loosen and soften the dirt. Certainly, if this is a hotter day, it would work better, but as it's about one degree, maybe even lower, um, it's not gonna work quite so quickly as it would normally. Right, then we can get back in and start blasting it off, which is the fun bit. doing the outside of the car. That's just steam, it's not on fire. So this paint is really, really flat. There's a lot of dirt ingrained into it. All the, the upper surfaces, the flat surfaces, hang on, let's go on the roof. You can kind of see how the water in the rain is not beading off at all. It's just sitting there and spreading out. This is basically what happens when a car gets dirt embedded in the, uh, in the paintwork and then that gradually just flattens off and it loses its glossy finish. So we're gonna do everything on it. This engine does make such a good noise. Oh, I love that. Alpha twin spark for the win. So we'll just open up with soaking the thing. These wheels aren't too dirty, but I will give them a dosing of ruby red. I always use this stuff because it's an iron extractor. It reacts with the uh, iron embedded in the paint on the wheels. In fact, there's a few little chips on these which could do with being painted out. And it will turn red while it uh, does its magic and you can see it working. Well, one, perhaps the only positive oops, wrong word, of this new wand section, lance section, is that the uh, the section on the front which grips the accessories actually works now. The other one was pretty worn out. Now while the uh, ruby red does its job on the wheels, I'm gonna do my absolute favorite bit of all. You know it's coming next. Snow foam! I love snow foam. And because that makes me feel all Christmassy, I'm gonna have the last of the mince pies while it's snowing. Now the roof in particular has got a lot of marks where it's been in the workshop. There are all what look like rust spots, but they're actually where there's been grinding stuff has caught in the paint and sat there. So I'm gonna uh, traffic film eliminator 
the entire roof, just so I can get this stuff out of it before I clay bar it. There's a lot more dirt coming out of here. And I can see now the um, rusty looking spots are disappearing. I actually made this up with boiling water this morning and already it's only tepid, lukewarm at best. Now there are some pretty bad rust spots around the front of this bonnet. I actually did paint some uh, rust killer onto them last night. So when I finish polishing and drying on this, I can paint in some blue paint, try and hide them a bit. But as I said earlier, this whole front end really does need a complete wash, not wash, paint. This is an area of extreme disgust. This is a really big, weird cutaway section of the roof, basically, where the tailgate cuts in a really long way. But it does fill up with gunk and gunge, but at least it opens wide enough that you can get in and clean it. Yeah, the TFL is great for these horrible, gungy green areas, lifting the grime out before you start, or well, as you start. Oops, I'm gonna to need to clean this uh, load space cover again. The studs are still actually a bit brown coming off this car, despite having been pre-cleaned with the, uh, the snow foam. Shows how deeply dirty the thing was. I'm even finding more places where I'm needing the lift off, where the snow foam just hasn't cut through it. Especially the little areas around here behind the headlamp washers. It's a nice little groove where the dirt can sit. And also, a little step back, I've just found the jet washer, pressure washer, has died completely on me. Now, one kind of ongoing issue I have with this car is a rear wiper. The arm is kind of an all-in-one unit and you just want to change the rubber bit as a refill, but they never seem to fit and they fall out quite a lot, which is quite annoying. In better news though, uh, a viewer saw the video last week with a broken reflector in there and so he's got a second hand one. He's posted down to me. I've not had a chance to go and collect it yet because I think it's down at the sorting office in the PO box right now. So I'll probably go this afternoon or tomorrow. Well, that was something of a relief. The thing started working again. I don't know if it's the plug or the device or the socket in the wall, but at least it works now and the car's shiny. The thing you find using snow foam of any brand is that the car has more of a sparkle to it after you've done the, uh, the suds wash as well. So it's always worth doing, even if you think it's not. It does seem to make the car prettier, but this is not what we're stopping today. We've got two, three more phases to go. And of course, as always, I was using the two bucket system. This is my rinse bucket, which is murky. It looks like black ink in there. This is the clean bucket. So the idea is that you rinse your sponge off in there, so your clean sponge goes back in here. Even that is pretty disgusting. So it shows how grimy a year of sitting outside being worked in in workshops will make a car. Now next up on my list of things to do is clay bar. If you've not used a clay bar before, you are missing out. This is horrible, tacky Play-Doh stuff that you just rub over the paintwork and it grips any dirt that's sticking into the surface of the paint and lifts it out. You need to use some kind of lube on it. Uh, you can either use Quick Detailer, there's specific uh, lubricant spray that comes for it, or you can just use waterless wash stuff, um, which is what I'm gonna put on here today. Anything to just give it a nice clean glide over there. And this is a new white bar. And you can see already, this, this is dirt that was ingrained into the paint, just lifting out and it goes from feeling like rough, almost like concrete, to after a couple of passes, to feeling like glass. It's amazing stuff. You have to keep it warm to keep it malleable, so before you start, you knead it in your hands a bit. Today it's absolutely icy cold, so I actually stuck it on a radiator for a few minutes just to get it warmed up and softened up. You might even be able to hear the difference if I run my hand on here, versus here. Yeah, that's rough. That's silent. Incredible. And by the time I'm done, this was brand new, will be horrible and brown and probably only fit for the bin. And then just finish off wiping it down with a clean microfiber. And suddenly that has transformed that from gritty and horrible nasty to extremely smooth and shiny. Now why am I bothering to do that before I'm gonna 
machine polish the car? Well, because if I don't do that, I'll have dirt ingrained in the paint and the machine polisher will just pick it up and grind it in circles and make it worse. So it's actually worth doing this about once or twice a year on a, on a daily car as well. Get all the dirt out of the car. It makes it look a thousand times better. Lovely, that is glossy smooth. Uh, of course, now I do have the entire rest of the car to do. Horrible and gritty, don't like that. It's only when you get into a job like this you realise exactly how many uh, facets and angles and shapes your car has. You can't just go over one big panel, you've got to go over all the individual ups, downs, flats, in, ins and outs. And you can use it on, uh, on the rubbers of the windows, but it comes off looking like that. It's good to get it into the crevices around the edges because then it lifts the dirt out from around the windows and do keep folding it and kneading it, keeping it well cleanish around the surface you're putting on the car. On days like this, you really do have sympathy for people whose job it is actually detailing cars for a living because it's not fun in this cold conditions. But at the same time, it's also potentially the most important time to do it because it stops the uh, ice and snow and road grit and salt sticking to the car. Not that I'm trying to take the car out much when it's salty. Now being a big flat surface like the bonnet, the roof is pretty terrible as well. Lots of these little ingrained spots of rust here in the paintwork, which are coming out really well. I've done the driver's side, and that's now glassy smooth. And that's the uh, passenger side, horrible and gritty like sandpaper. Do a quick drag test. That's silent. And you can actually, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but that's quiet. You can actually hear that dragging across the roof. It's so rough. Well, that is now done. It is deeply shiny and deeply smooth all over. And just look at the state of this clay bar. This is brand new and bright white, just like an hour or so ago. I've, I've lost even track of time. It took about an hour and a half, actually, to do the entire car. But that's every single crevice, right into the little grooves and nooks and crannies. So the whole thing does sparkle like new. I have been planning on doing a, uh, a cut and then a polish with the machine. Uh, but I think I'm just going to go straight for the, uh, the polish because um, it doesn't feel like it needs it. There's no swirls in it. It's a nice surface. There's no need to do a cut in it, I don't think. So we just go for the second lighter stage. Then we go for the uh, ceramic coating afterwards. But just look at the state of that. that. All that dirt was still in the paint. Oh, even after jet wash, pre-wash with foam, jet wash again, suds wash with a sponge or a you know, mitt, then jet wash again, and some traffic film remover in places, and then jet wash some more. That's like four or five jet washes and three stages of washing and still this dirt is in the paint. So it's amazing what the, uh, the surface can hold, how rough it really is, but you can't see it. Now, more often than not, I'll be going in with one cut, first of all, but this finish is really glassy smooth to start with. One finish on the Draper Dual Action Polisher Storm Force model. I'll stick a link in the description below. This thing has proved itself to be extremely good over the last year or so first seen on the uh, Volvo back in the in the spring I think just as the first lockdown struck so there we go we're in the third lockdown and it's still being used I wonder how many more lockdowns we'll see it through Is astonishingly shiny but it really does show up all the stone chips I've got to have to go over in a bit. You can tell this front bumper has been repainted at some point and not particularly well.
sun. And that is astonishingly shiny now. Oh, when you're buffing off the stuff, don't, don't forget, make sure you've got plenty of microfibers because they get dirty and they get damp and they stop working. Now, ceramic glaze, it's a nice coating that you use in place of a, a whack at the end of your, your cleaning process. And you can have a dealer installed or dealer applied ceramic coating, which is a little bit different to this. This one doesn't last quite as long. Well, it's, it's lasting maybe three to six months, depending on how the car is used, but it does bond with the uh, surface of the paint. It gets into the grain of it and then it just forms like a glassy surface. And the great thing about this over a traditional wax uh, is that you can use it into virtually sub-zero temperatures and you just spray on and wipe off. And you're done. It really is as simple as that. And it means the car will stay clean. Water will bead off and just run away. And dirt won't stick to either. You can do it on the glass as well. It doesn't matter if it gets in the glass. Of course, you can also do all the door shuts as well, which helps them stay cleaner, drier and rust free for longer. And of course, because this stuff protects against UV, the other thing we can do is protect these new tail lights on this thing as well. Protect our investment. And we'll chuck a bit of tyre dressing on these old bridge stones. They're getting a bit long in the tooth, but they still look okay and grip okay, so we'll keep on shining up, making them look nice. Now I can go in with a cocktail stick and just apply a little bit of Azuro Fantasia to all these many, many stone chips. I'm not overly concerned about doing an amazing job, just a job that's better than bare metal, so it doesn't rust up again. It actually uh, cleaned the, uh, the rust out really well. I left the rust killer on last night and uh, hosed it off this morning and the difference is night and day. It's back to, to kind of white metal in a lot of places. There are a lot of stone chips down here though. This could take quite a while. It does unfortunately look a lot like it's been shot blasted. Well, I've done the big obvious ones and there are literally hundreds. I think I'm gonna to have to come back and spend a lot longer with another cocktail stick, just dabbing in many hundreds of these little tiny, tiny, tiny little spots until it's all gone. But you know, it looks a lot better now. The big obvious ones are colored in so they don't show up quite as bad as they did before. But ultimately, maybe during the summertime, we'll have to spring for a front end repaint on this thing. But right now, it looks spectacular. I was gonna do the thermostat, but it's getting dark and it's getting cold. It's actually misting over like it's gonna rain soon. The car looks superb. It is so shiny. It is almost a new car. I'm very, very happy indeed with the state of this thing and the way it's come out after today. I couldn't believe how dirty that clay bowl was though. There's so much filth and grime in this paint, which is now mirror smooth. It's a massive transformation. Well, the good thing here is though, that when the uh, dirt and the snow and the rain and the ice comes, it's not gonna bond, it's not gonna damage the car. It'll just drop straight off, which is the goal here, protecting the car, making it last longer. Well, thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed. Uh, next time will be a mechanicing video rather than a cleaning video. Um, but this was an entire day of cleaning, so if I didn't do this, you lose a day. And uh, as we're now homeschooling, because schools are shut, uh, there's precious few days to do things, so everything's a video now. <laughs> if you've not hit subscribe already, then please do. It makes a massive difference to the channel. The more subscribers we have, the more people are willing to work with us and do other things outside of the regular videos, so that certainly helps. And uh, join me again next time for something, I don't know what, probably the convertible, I reckon. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.